this is sin, you know, we shouldn't be doing this. Tonight, a victim of pre-sex abuse speaks out and shares his story of abuse at the hands of a trusted church leader. Good evening. Thanks for watching. It has been more than two months now since Attorney General Kathleen Kane released that grand jury report on the massive Altoona Johnstown Diocese cover-up of clergy members sexually assaulting children for more than 40 years. Just yesterday, more allegations made by whistleblower George Foster. Tonight, we continue our investigation into the scandal that has rocked the community. Carolyn Donaldson joins us now, live from what's a growing protest outside the Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament in Altoona, with more on this victim's shocking story. Carolyn? Well, John, yes, I am joined here by about a dozen protesters who started gathering just after 5 o'clock along 13th Avenue here. They're here ahead of that 7 o'clock prayer service for the healing for the victims and their families that will be held inside the cathedral here. And on their posters, they have pictures of child sex abuse and some of them victims themselves. Now, the victim that I want to bring you tonight, his story is one that he says has scarred him for life after years and years of sexual abuse and being forced to dress as a woman during those sexual encounters. He's also afraid of his family and the toll that it's taking on them, and so he asked to remain anonymous. We'll call him John. John's story is shocking. Raised as a Catholic, he attended Catholic elementary schools in Altoona before heading to Bishop Guilfoyle as a teen. That's where I, I got to meet uh, uh, Father Raymond, Father Raymond Waldruff. And, uh, he was uh, my teacher at Bishop Guilfoyle. When he was 15, John said the grooming began. And he asked me if I uh, would like to earn some extra money. He began doing odd jobs and washing father's car. John said his abuser even groomed his parents. I look back and uh, I just, the way he over, I know, just could persuade people. Father Raymond won John's parents' approval for sleepovers at the rectory and frequent trips out of town. I started cuddling, you know, started doing the cuddling thing and then uh, morning showers before we went to school. When it escalated to more sexual advances, John confronted his aggressor. I, I told him, I said, Father Raymond, we, you know, this is sin, you know, we shouldn't be doing this. Carol, I can't tell you why I, I kept going back. You know, I don't know if it was because of the money or the booze. John says Father Raymond backed off for a short time. He questioned him again. And he says, um, and he, well, you know, he says, uh, do you believe in God? And I say, yeah, I believe in God. You know, why wouldn't I, when I, wanted, why wouldn't I believe in God? And, and he said, well, he goes, you want to go to heaven. God wanted us to be together. And this is what. You know, if you really want to go to heaven, you do what I tell you to do. John was forced to dress in women's clothing during sexual encounters. And, and then he started dressing up in women's clothes, you know. And, uh, of course, uh, had, uh, had uh, anal sex with him. I mean, it happened. Uh, well, almost like a daily basis. John said the sexual abuse continued for years. I went to Disney as a girl and went to uh, the Fountain Youth there in St. Augustine, Florida, and St. Augustine, Florida, and Daytona Beach, you know, just as a girl. And not just at the rectory. A couple of times, even here at Assumption Chapel, I was, uh, there was a room in the basement of the Assumption Chapel. And when he was doing mass, I would be. I'd be dressed as a, as a girl. And yet, as John recalls, no one ever questioned Father Raymond. Sometimes I'd be out back playing in the church, you know, out back in the church on the hill. And I know parishioners had to see me, you know, but nothing was said. Nothing, nothing at all was said. John's abuser bought him a car, motorcycle, and gave him money whenever he needed something. And there was nothing for him to go in the collection basket and just take money out of it. And John said the abuse finally stopped when Father Raymond was transferred to a church in Kentucky. Father Raymond died in 1985. Through all the years of abuse, John never told anyone. 
I'm back live out here outside the Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament, again, joined by several protesters ahead of that prayer service for healing. Let me tell you that John had a successful military career. He was able to get married and have children, and he didn't tell anyone until 60 years later when he moved back to this area, and those triggers started happening. And part of why he's telling his story is now, and you'll hear more of his story tonight at 11, is because he wants this abuse to stop. He's calling on action by the diocese, of course, the Attorney General's investigation on Earthing more cases of pre sex abuse. And he says he's doing it for other victims out there. Now, we reached out repeatedly to the bishop's office for comment and reaction to this piece, and they responded last week to us and said they would not be able to grant us any interview or comment about any of this or those new allegations that surfaced yesterday. They tell me that uh, prayer services for the healing, like the one that's getting underway here in just under an hour, is where their focus is directed right now. So we'll continue to follow this. We'll have part two of my story, including some uh, talk from the watchdog, George Foster, on the action that he'd like to see, and including some talk from uh, 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 Frank Burns, who is down in Harrisburg, and the action against the statute of limitations. We'll have all that coming up at 11. But for now, reporting live outside of the Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament, I'm Carolyn Donaldson. Oh, John? Powerful. I think.